Hey everybody, it's Sarah from Raising Taylors. I have a meal prep video for you this week. This is how I try to prep healthy lunches and dinners for my family, making breakfast convenient. And overall, this is how I'm trying to do some new things too. So there's some tester stuff we're gonna do this week. Uh, I have a, a breakdown of how I'm gonna do this. I break this up into two days uh, for optimal freshness. Um, I don't cook any meat ahead of time. I always try to cook it the day of or night before just so that it stays fresh, but it will properly package with like food saver and things like that. So that's one way to do this. Also, uh, this is part one, so part two will be posted right afterwards. So be sure to watch both. Before we get into this video, go ahead and hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you decide by the end this isn't for you, my feelings aren't hurt, but at least you'll already have that done and out of the way. So let's get right into this meal prep video. This is gonna be fun. So I've got my breakdown of Saturday and Sunday stuff. So looking at my stuff here, I'm gonna read it off to you. We're gonna work on making bread today smoothie jars. I'm going to chop up some broccoli, chop up some peppers, chop up some green beans. I'm going to do three different kinds of potatoes in the oven and I'm going to separate my chicken breasts in their food saver bag so I can get them portioned and then hopefully the bread will be settled in time where I can do freezer French toast. Okay, that's my hopes and dreams. Um, so that's what we're going to accomplish today all right so yes that's what we're going for so i'm going to show you what i've got here just like how i try to get set up um how i'm going to do this because i don't have a tripod to like where i can do this and speed through it and stuff like everybody else does because that sounds perfect um i'm going to try to show you the processes of things like uh, I'll show you how I fill one jar and then show you how all of them look at the end um, so that you can write that recipe down for yourself and then I have my bread recipe I've done it a lot turns out great I've done it with all-purpose white flour I've done it with whole wheat flour it all works fine so I really love this bread recipe you get two loaves out of it um, and I mean, chopping vegetables is chopping vegetables. I kind of like to watch it, so maybe someone else does too. But I'm going to show you how I've got this prep station going, so let's get right into that. So I've got these brand new jars. They're turned upside down because I, I went ahead and wiped them out, got them separated. They're on a towel, so they're ready to just grab and go, right? So those are brand new. I washed all of these lids, okay, so there are 12 red lids four purple lids underneath this tower here are the lids that go with the red containers okay so these will be like lunch meal preps for me and husband and then this is where i'm going to store uh <clears throat> the chopped vegetables um hard boiled eggs and egg white cups which are coming tomorrow so if you're looking for a recipe for that check in for part two for that recipe and we'll store those in here now I've got my bananas sitting here on the counter because I'm going to get those chopped up and start those for the smoothie cups. I do need to wipe this out because this is going to be used for tomorrow's baking. And then some things over there that are ready to go. I've got my list, my recipe book for the first thing I'm starting with. As always, try to have an empty clean sink try to have an empty clean strainer unless everything in your strainer is something you're going to be using like i'll be using that bowl and spatula and then always have like a trash can that is available for filling and then a bag for extra stuff so that's how we meal prep my counter has been wiped off clean so i can need my bread on the counter <sighs> all right i'm ready let's get started Okay, so here's what we've got. So I've got my bread stuff going here. This is three cups of whole wheat flour, three tablespoons of sugar, and one tablespoon of salt. I'm gonna go ahead and whisk those all together. While I had measured these out, I had started with my yeast. I did one packet of active dry yeast with two and a quarter cups of water. I heated it up between uh, 110, 115. 
and I've let it set up here. The little bubbles on top, that's what I want to see. So I'm going to go ahead, mix this up, and then I will add in my yeast mixture, and I'll add the oil, and then I'll slowly start incorporating the other three cups as directed here, because it does take six and a quarter cup. So that's how we're going to do this. So I will show you what this looks like after I have got all the dough mixed in and uh, I'll be kneading it since I need my hands for that. <laughs> um, I'll just show you what it looks like after I put it back in this bowl to rise. So let's get to it. Okay, so this is what it looks like after it's been kneaded. Now it's going to sit in here and rise for an hour and a half. And it has to at least double in size, okay? And then I'll have to knead it again just for a little bit and divide it in its loaf pans and bake it. So I will catch in on that when that happens. Uh, so now, while that's going, let's get my list. Let's see, where's number two? Smoothie jar. So I'm gonna rinse out my measuring cups and show you what I'm gonna do with these smoothie jars, so. Okay, so. I've got a banana here. We're going to go ahead and cut this up. I'm going to try to do this on camera, guys. I'm going to try. Let's see. I think I forgot to grab my knife. Here we go. All right, so I was taught to go ahead and cut it up small because it'll be easier to blend up a banana that has been chopped up once it's frozen. So into your jar, by the way, these are, I wanna say pint, pint size jars, okay? So you're gonna take your bananas, put them right in there, okay? Banana, okay, so banana. I like to take, just for a little extra nutrition, about that much of a cheese seed, right inside. And then I'm gonna grab my half cup measuring cup, okay? Pop that out right there. Take our whole strawberries. And plop that in there. Now, I'm not doing a ton, I just wanted one more, uh, because the yogurt I bought for my husband was strawberry Chobani yogurt, so that'll add more strawberry flavor as well. So, this is now prepped and done for your basic strawberry banana. Take your lid, your clean lid. Take your ring. Ooh, I did it one-handed, guys. Okay, and that's it. And then I set this in the freezer. Now I can label the day I make these. I will just to see how well these turn out. Um, and then I'll label strawberry banana and that's it. Now I use the Sharpie. You can take Sharpie off with nail polish remover. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. But that's how I'm going to do the rest of uh, the smoothies. Basically just prep the fruit and the ing dry ingredients and add the wet ingredients at time of blending. So that's how we're going to do this. So... I'll show you all the different kinds I make at the end in the next clip. All right, so here are the 12 that are done. So I did three strawberry banana with chia seed. I did three spinach, avocado, and blueberry, I think, with chia seed. And I did three mango, banana, and spinach. These are... Uh, mango, chia seed, banana, and coconut cream. So, and it's not like canned coconut, it's like some drizzle stuff I already have. So, those are the smoothies. I have plenty of fruit left over. I bought a lot, but I had used up some bags I already had open. But, I needed these to be in here, because when I'm at home, I can just make them while I'm here at home, right? So then I have an extra traffic blend. I love chocolate strawberry smoothies. It's like my guilty pleasure. Um, and I mix that with my chocolate protein powder, so that's why I have extra strawberry. But those are gonna go in there. I've got plenty of spinach. I bought one tub of spinach, so I can make extra green smoothies for myself. I still have the two avocados, so those will be for my green smoothies, or maybe I wanna use them on avocado toast. 
We're gonna have a big pile of bananas. That's what we're down to now. So uh, it's nice. Everything I bought isn't just going to one item. I can still use it for multiple things. That's really how I like to meal prep. So moving on to number three, chop broccoli. Here I go. All right, so I went ahead and cut off the super long, obnoxious stalks. That was on all the broccoli. Yes, I could keep it and use it. I don't want to. I don't like how it tastes. It actually causes me to bloat really, 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 really bad. So I'm going to chop all this up. But before I do that, because most people know what chopped broccoli looks like, um, when you have your clean container, you just take a damp or wet paper towel. I've, I've made mine pretty wet, actually. And then that way I put my cut up pieces in here, put my lid on it, move on. So I have kind of like a system going. I pulled out my veggies so I can just pick up the next tray and go, pick up the next tray and go, bring it over to my wash station, take it from my sink colander. If there's a lot that won't fit on this little tiny space right here, that's why I have this extra towel down. The stations I set up for the glasses and stuff, like, there's a reason for everything. <laughs> there's a reason why these towels are here, and it's so that that next station's already set for me. So that's what that's about. So I will show you what everything looks like when they're all done and nicely lined up. So, shopping veggie time. Let's hope this works out. Okay, so this is the finished product here. I got a container of green beans, the peppers, the broccoli, and my little bitty carrots. So, I'm gonna put lids on those, put those in the fridge, and those will be ready for tomorrow's prep. Now we're moving on to, oh, let's see, we did three, four, five, six is the, the potatoes. Okay, so I'm going to take a quick break off my feet, about 15 minutes, put my feet up while my oven is preheating and see what's going to happen because this bread needs to get cooked soon. Ooh, it's getting bigger. So, all right. Okay, so the dough was ready. I only needed to knead it a little bit. Probably didn't need to knead it at all. I hope this turns out okay. Sometimes, like, bread just doesn't work out for me, but here's to hoping. I currently have my oven preheating to 375. So, these are sitting here and waiting to go in. They gotta rest for another 30 minutes. Um, so I'm keeping an eye on that. So they will go into the oven at five o'clock. So while that's going, I can't really like roast the potatoes while they're in there because they need to be roasted at 400 degrees. I could peel them and let them sit and all that stuff, but it just might not happen. It, it really just might not. So I still need to put my feet up because as soon as I ended the last clip, my timer went off. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my feet up for a little bit. And then while the bread is going, because the bread will take about 30 minutes, I'm going to go ahead and just separate out the chicken. And I will go ahead and start doing the potatoes after the chicken's all separated. Because, yeah, that says bake for 30, 35 minutes to cool. I might not have enough time to do the freezer french toast because that bread has to sit. So we will see, but that's where I am right now. Uh, here is the state of dishes. Those seriously are the only dishes I have to wash because I'm still using these for potatoes. They're rinsed off, ready for the next round. This, yep, just gotta wash it because the bread was in it. So I'm still doing really, really good. These are gonna be ready. Uh, as soon as they're dry, I'll stack those up, set those aside for tomorrow. That's probably gonna house the potatoes if the bread needs more time, but it won't permanently house them. So yes, that's where we are right now. Here's where we are. The bread is currently in the oven. So I've got my chicken that needs to be separated and packaged. I'm hoping I can get two chicken breasts per bag. I've got six here total. Here's my food saver. Where's the on switch? And it's ready. So hopefully these things work out. I love, 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 love my food saver. I would show you how this works, but it takes two hands to hold the bag. So when I get a tripod, that's one of the things I'll show you guys. So uh, time check. Time check is 510. Bread went in about uh, three minutes ago. So the timer's on that. And then... 
I am not going to have enough time to do potatoes because the potatoes are going to need at least an hour in there and, and at 400 degrees and I still have to cook dinner. After they come out of the oven, they have to sit and rest before I put them away and it's just going to be too late because I also need to give my son a bath tonight and this won't get done tonight. That'll get done tomorrow. So that's okay. These two things are going to get moved to tomorrow. And a little preview for what's coming tomorrow. It's gonna be pretty easy because I did a lot of the prepping today. So, yay, there's the thing, so here we go. I'll show you what this looks like at the end. All right, so there they are. They are labeled. This is the date I put them in their package. It's boneless, Let's see if I can get a better light. Boneless, skinless, chicken, breast. Okay, there's two breasts per bag. This makes things so much easier. Yes, if you don't have a food saver, it's probably something you should put on like your wedding registry. Look for them at like your, um, what do you call those, Goodwills, and maybe find one like on Amazon on sale. They're totally worth it. Love my food saver. So I'm going to put these in the freezer, put the other bags away because I had some extra bags pulled out, and then I think... I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling out stuff for dinner. So you get a little sneak peek at what we're doing for dinner tonight. Okay, so here's the peek at what we're doing for dinner. These are, it's like a homemade version of uh, Hamburger Helper's beefy shells. So here is some of the seasoning. We got kosher salt, black pepper. I need some Italian seasoning. Of course I need shells. I need some flour, ground beef cheese it did call for sharp cheddar this is what i have so it'll be fine i don't have tomato sauce so i'm going to make some with my diced tomatoes just going to puree it up and call it a day uh i needed some it called for heavy cream half and half will have to do i needed olive oil and some beef broth now i could easily double this and be like dinner for now dinner for later right because i have the meat to do it um i'm choosing to not do that so uh, I need half of this meat for tonight and the other half for another meal tomorrow. Um, so that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. And so you can see what the bread looks like. <laughs> kind of weird how that, you know, rose, right? But it smells really good. It's, it's still warm, so it's cooling. So there's that. This one is primarily going to be for, like, toast and stuff like that. This is the one I'm going to turn into French toast because it's pretty much the ugliest. But, yeah bread so that recipe makes two loaves this is whole wheat okay something i did have to do let's see that's got good it's cooked it's nice it's it's wonderful so uh something i did have to do is i did have to get my husband's help kneading it because i didn't put enough oil in it the first time so we went back and put more oil in it before the first rise and it turned out just fine so i would say Instead of doing the two, I think it's, I think it called for two tablespoons of canola oil. Yeah, here we go. I got this recipe on Pinterest. It's not mine. Most of my recipes come from family or Pinterest. Um, instead of doing two tablespoons of canola oil, I would just do four and see how it goes when you need it. If you need to add another one, add it one tablespoon at a time. But wheat bread reacts differently than white bread. If you're doing the white bread, then follow this. This is the white bread recipe. Let me hold it so in case somebody wants to screenshot it, they can. All right. But yeah, love it. So I will show you what this looks like when we're done. Uh, otherwise, I am done with meal prep for the night, guys. So I will be doing part two tomorrow. So stay tuned for how dinner looks. All right, that is the final. Ooh, sorry, guys. Final finished product for dinner. It's actually quite yummy. So yeah, it turned out really well. Uh, I would recommend sticking to the original recipe here. I just had to make improvisations where I had to because uh, it took longer to thicken up. But yes, it's really yummy and delicious. I did one round of dishes already, so that's great. These are just dinner dishes. Like yeah, that's soaking from bread, but like that can soak. And these are just dinner dishes. So. I get to those tonight or not um, my dishwasher is clean so I could unload it and reload it tonight got one thing of trash here Whew, close this up 
and my son is in the bathtub, so I think, yeah, this is what I wanted to show you. This is like how I put the bread away. I don't have enough containers to store two loaves of bread. That's probably gonna be in my next purchase. Find big enough containers to store the bread. But for now, that's what we've got. All right, that was it. That was my day one of meal prep. So tomorrow is gonna mostly be about assembling. Um, and I did, forgot to mention, I said in the video originally I was gonna do half that package of ground beef. I ended up doing the whole thing because I checked when it was packed and it needed to be cooked, like tonight, all of it. So tomorrow I'll just do something with just bacon. We'll see what I can do. So we'll see how that goes tomorrow. So tomorrow's gonna be fun. Uh, if you haven't already, be sure to hit like and subscribe. Remember to follow me on Instagram at Raising Taylor's Moments for more in the moment stuff with me. And uh, as always, have a great day, guys.